Welcome to 365 Christian Men, where every day we aim to inspire and encourage with real life stories about men. October 21st, Jerry Dunn. Jerry Dunn was a recognized expert on alcoholism and alcoholics. Trouble is, he earned that distinction the hard way, first-hand experience. He presented at special conferences for pastors, medical students, and doctors. Jerry was also the executive director of People City Mission Home in Nebraska and president of the International Union of Gospel Missions. He is author of Alcoholics Victorious and God is for the Alcoholic. Obeying God gives him an opportunity to provide for you. It was a cold February afternoon, the kind of cold that numbs the fingers and tests the will of winter-weary commuters scraping frost off icy windshields. When Jerry Dunn drove home and walked in the front door, he didn't expect to see his family isolated in the kitchen. His wife, Greta, had turned the oven on high, but it wasn't eliminating the damp chill in the air. The home's fuel tank had run out. Jerry's income should have been enough to cover household expenses, but there were other expenses too, mainly the restitution that needed to be paid from his drinking days. Thank God those drinking days were over. Jerry had discovered new life in Christ when he surrendered his old life to God and was converted in his jail cell. It happened after a two-year stint in a Texas prison. There was nothing Jerry wanted more than to stay sober and to honor God and keep the steps in his AA recovery. The eighth step was to make a list of all the people he had harmed and to make amends with them all. Paying restitution was a necessary part of making those amends. And Jerry was more than happy to do it because now he belonged to Jesus. He wouldn't let hardship, like running out of fuel, destroy his peace or drive him to the bottle like he had done in the old days. Instead, along with Greta, he bowed his head and they prayed that God would fill the oil tank. Wishful thinking? Well, Jerry didn't think so. That same afternoon, Jerry felt like he was supposed to go over to the print shop where many of his friends still worked. After some small talk with the guy at the front desk, Jerry wondered why he had come there. Was it really the Holy Spirit who was prompting him to be there or was it just his own desperation? Jerry asked God to let him know why he was really there. Then he decided to leave and head over to the Open Door Mission where he had worked serving broken men who needed a warm bed and a hot meal. Jerry was wrapping up the conversation in the printing shop when the man with whom he had been speaking stopped him and said, Jerry, wait, can you take a gift? Jerry assumed he meant a gift to the rescue mission, but that's not what the man meant. He wanted to give Jerry a gift, even though Jerry had said nothing about his financial situation or the lack of fuel at home. The generous man proceeded to write out a check for the exact amount needed to fill the oil tank. When Jerry looked at the amount written on the check, he was overwhelmed at the magnitude of God's provision. 1 John 5, 14 and 15 says, And this is the confidence we have toward him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we will have the requests that we have asked of him. Jerry was learning what it meant to live by faith and to trust in God alone. Has God taught you how to trust him in your life? Obeying God gives him an opportunity to provide for you. Thank you for listening to today's story. Every day of the year, our hope is to inspire you with real life stories of faithful men who have gone before us. 
Hebrews 12.1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Join us tomorrow for another story at 365christiannet.com.